Stanislaw here with Motion VFX, and in this tutorial, we'll be using an MO2 template to make an energy drink commercial. And if you're brand new to this kind of stuff, MO2 is a plugin from Motion VFX that lets you do full 3D renders and animation directly in Final Cut. For this lesson, we're going to be using one of the extra templates that you can purchase from Motion VFX's website. All of these here are available for purchase, and we're going to start with this one right here. Starting with project number 17 from the MO2 expansion set that I've dragged into my timeline. And we're going to be changing a few things. We're going to be changing the can. We're going to be changing these light spheres and a lot of the backgrounds. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is go right to this area where I can see my can and open the inspector. I'm going to close the media browser and move some things around here and I want to select that can label. So I have my main can here, otherwise I can select the can right in the canvas. With that selected, I'm going to open up the material by selecting the material slot and go all the way to the bottom and select these drop zones. So in MO2, these drop zones can be used for materials and they work the same exact way as regular drop zones select my item that I want to fill with my drop zone from my media browser. Here's my label. And I'm going to put that inside my drop zone. Check it out. So just like that, we've been able to completely replace our label on our cans that we're using that drop zone. Now, one of my cans I already had selected with that drop zone. So let's choose this other can. And the way we're going to make this label is I'm just going to drag it from my one can material onto the other can's material and make a reference. And what that means is if I change anything on one, it'll change it on all of them. Next, let's change up the scene a little bit and change our environment. So I'm going to open up the scene settings, the environment, and open up our environment library. What's great about the environments here is as soon as you click on any of them, it places them in the scene. I'm going to expand this a little bit so we can see what's happening. When I select one of these environments, if you know environments, the reflections that are appearing on the can are directly from that environment. So you can see the window here right on this can. That's a little too bright for me. So I'm going to use a CG kind of studio light setup. And just switching between these gives me a good idea of what it's going to look like. Obviously, the brighter, the more light it's going to have. I'm going to choose this one down here under CG and studio. And I believe it's the two box. I'll select that and hit OK. We can further modify that in our color corrections and I can go ahead and change that. I'm just going to adjust the gamma and then we'll move on into our backgrounds. Selecting our background, I'm going to change this. We're going to leave it as environment, but change it to ultra blurry. And right in the back, you can see that kind of smooth things out. I can work with the gamma and the hue and saturation in here as well. So I want that a bit darker to kind of blend out. Next, let's move on to this floor. I'm not going to do too much with this floor, but I'm just going to select this material and let's darken this up a little bit. I'm going to make this a little bit more reflective and we're going to turn up this metalness and you can see that it's kind of melting out in the back there. While we're still here, let's talk about these glow balls. These are made from an instancer. And if I go up to the top of my objects, I'm going to open this up and grab that sphere. This sphere is the base for the instancer. So if I change anything to this sphere, it's going to change all the instances of it. That's true of scale, position, rotation, whatever. I'm going to change this material and I'm going to drag it from the instancer right to the sphere and we're going to move this. Next, I'll duplicate this so I really have two different spheres. I can either reference a material or make two separate materials, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and make that a reference just to make sure they're both the same. And I'm going to go on down to the illuminance channel and just change this from the red to maybe a bit of a yellow. So now that we have two different spheres, if I change the size of one, that's actually going to be changing the size of half of them in the instancer. So instantly we can create multiple different sizes of them. Affecting our different instancer controls, like our noise and our modifiers, we can add a little bit more movement to these. 
In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put this up in the Y position a little bit more. I think that looks good. Let's play this back. Okay, so we've changed our background, we've changed our environment, so why do we have this going on in our background? Well, that's actually a background layer sphere that we have set up in this scene. So what exactly does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and take a better look at this through the perspective view. What we're looking at here is the entirety of our scene inside this sphere. When you're putting your own designs together, you can absolutely move around, but sometimes it's easier just to work with it in place. Now that I can see this a little bit more clearer, let's adjust these instances of these spheres just a little bit more and give them a bit more space. Okay, now let's go back to those backgrounds. So we have this background of the sphere that we've discovered. If I go into this material and I change this material, effectively this is like creating a new kind of background. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Let's move on and do the same thing for the next scene. So I know it's gonna pop up right around here. And now I can see this one is already silver. So I'm gonna select this one and let's make this one yellow. I'm gonna choose my yellow and then we'll close this. And in the materials, I'm gonna work with both the metalness and the roughness. The metalness, you can see it's creating this softness and the roughness is creating this almost tight specular. So let's take a look at this from the active camera view. This is a little too bright from this angle, so I'm gonna go ahead and tone this down just a bit. Then I'll make a few more adjustments to the material channels. We'll move on to the third scene here and we'll do that same process. So I'm selecting the material. Maybe I'm gonna work with the channels first, see if I can get any kind of brightness there. I think this will look better a bit yellow as well. So I'm gonna select the color swatch and choose a yellow color. I'll make this fairly dark so it stands out. And then I'll go ahead and close that up. Okay, we've made a whole lot of different changes in here so far, but now it's time to go through and change out all our text. Through my template, I'm just going to select my text I'm going to go ahead and replace that. So it's really easy to just double click in the canvas, go ahead and type, but I will need to jump into the inspector to change my font and to customize it as far as tracking or other layout controls. I'm gonna continue this through the rest of the different text items until we get to the final text item where we're going to remove the stars and kind of work with the end tag just a little bit more. Okay, now that we're near the end of our template, I'm going to use the inspector controls to change out the text items like we just did before. So what I'm using here is a combination of two different fonts, really Lato and uh, Roboto. And for the very end, I'm just using that Lato and setting this all up. We don't necessarily need the bottom text item, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. And we don't need the disclaimer, so I'm gonna select and remove that as well. We have the stars down here, and if I just change the star number to zero, that will eliminate my stars, and I won't have them there. Now, I want to work further with this, so I'm gonna select my text, and I'm in the text part of the inspector. And inside here, I'm gonna change the color by using the face controls, and then we'll rotate this just a little bit on the Z axis, about 10 degrees. And we'll do that for both of our text items. So you see me selecting it, and then I'll go ahead and change those individual items one at a time. If this was all in the same layer, then you could do it all at once, but because they're two different text elements, I have to do them individually. Okay, let's give this one more look over and see if there's anything else we need to change. And I think right here at the beginning, I wanna change out those water droplets, the water splash of those droplets. So I'm gonna go back up to the top of my inspector and I'm gonna find those water droplets. In fact, if I select right here, it looks like those are the wrong ones. I'm gonna select it right in my canvas. There they are. 
What I'm gonna do with these is, I can see it's got this brownish tint. I'm gonna change that to white, a little bit of a yellowish white, and then we'll go to the very bottom and change the opacity. So we're gonna change this to something really, really low so it has more of a clear translucent effect. As the last finishing touch, now that my whole animation is complete, I can still use this clip in my timeline as a video clip and apply effects to it. To give this a little bit more pop, I'll add a contrast effect that's included with Final Cut, and I'll place that into my clip. Now, if I scrub through this, I can see this extra contrast, and I'll need to click on the video layer in my inspector to open up that color board. Here, I can kind of dial it in if I want to raise or lower that contrast using these highs and lows of my exposure settings. All right, there you have it. That is a quick, easy way that you can use an MO2 template to make an energy drink commercial. Let's go ahead and check out the final example right here. My name again is Stanislaw Liberta with Motion VFX. If you like this tutorial and you want to see more of this, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.